Okay. Yeah. Welcome uh, to the mass mass uh, colloquium today. And today, yeah, we have a, a very honored uh, guest, uh, Professor Norikazu Takahashi, and his PhD student, Mr. Kento Endo. <laughs> Professor Takahashi uh, is a, a faculty member, full professor at uh, Department of Computer Science at. Uh, Okayama University. Uh, he uh, had his PhD degree from Gushu University and uh, he worked uh, at uh, Okayama University as a full professor since uh, 2013. And he uh, have uh, uh, wo uh, published and worked uh, in uh, computer science uh, uh, very actively. And today uh, he is uh, going to share uh, his recent work and uh, his uh, some mathematical aspect of uh, his problems. Uh, he will uh, talk a new uh, decentralized discrete time algorithm for estimating algebraic connectivity of multi-agent networks, which is a co-work uh, with uh, Mr. Endo. And uh, the f first part will be delivered by Professor Takahashi, and second part will be delivered by Mr. Ando, and Professor Takahashi will uh, raise uh, the main problems that he likes to discuss with, discuss with us. So we warmly welcome uh, Professor Takahashi. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Norikazu Takashi from Kyush um, Okayama University, Japan. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Professor Lee for uh, giving us this opportunity to talk about with, um, my, our research. And, okay. I, I don't understand the, the, the meaning. <laughs> uh, okay, I can do, I can do that. This is cancer and uh, okay. This is the slide one. Yes. Slide one, and you have all the slides here. Full screen mode. Full screen mode. I see. Uh, view. Uh, control L. Full. Thank you. Uh, this is the title of this talk, Decentralized Discrete Time Algorithm for Estimating Algebraic Connectivity of Multi-Agent Networks. Next. Okay, this slide shows the, the contents, outline of this talk. First, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to multi-agent networks and algebraic connectivity. And then, my graduate students Mr. Endo will talk about his research, and then I will uh, show you some problems we, we, have, we are facing and uh, we want to solve. Okay. But before uh, going to, to the topic, I, I just <laughs> say something about uh, my, my background. And uh, I'm from Okayama University. And where is Okayama? Okayama is here. There is a direct flight from Okayama to Seoul. And Okayama, uh, Osaka is here, and Kobe, and Hiroshima. Okayama is between Kobe and Hiroshima. Okay. And I was born in Kumamoto here. And uh, I went to Kyushu University in Fukuoka here. It's very close to Busan. And there is a... Uh, uh, Okay, ship between Fukuoka and Busan. Yes. Okay. okay, Okayama University uh, has a long history. It was established as a national university of Japan in 1949, but the origin is the medical training place founded in 1890. So it has a long, uh, 1870, I'm sorry, it's a long story. And uh, Okayama University has a wide variety of undergraduate and graduate schools, for example, letters and education and uh, engineering and science and so on. And we have uh, 10,000 
undergraduate students and uh, almost 3,000 graduate students. And this is the most important thing. Okayam University has an exchange agreement with Sengyunga University. Okay. So that's why I came here. And this picture is the medical training place. It's a very old one. And this is the main street in the campus. And this is the library and uh, yes. In 1870, huh? yes. Yes. how many medical schools in Japan? Ah, I don't have any idea. Not many at the time. But uh, I think ten is about forty or fifty or yeah, yeah, yes. I, I think I Okay, and uh, this is a self interaction, but uh, first Sari has already uh, so talked, so I will skip. My, my, I, I just want to say my research interests include multi agent system, which I will talk today, but the graph theory and the optimization theory, nonlinear systems, and neural networks, and so on. Okay. So. So you do a non-negative matrix factorization? Well. Non-negative matrix factorization? Okay. I am interested in the, the method, okay. efficient method for non-negative matrix factorization. It is a kind of optimization problem. Yeah. Okay. So you know, you know where about the Sebastian Sun's work on the... Sun is a, a kind of a star in, <laughs> in this field. And Sebastian Sun, yes. Okay, this is the end of the slide, and uh, I will. I want to go to the next slide. Uh, how, how? Just enter. Second file. Yes, step three. Close. Just I want to close. Let's see. Here. Okay, here. We continue. Thank you. Okay, as a first part, I, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, multi-agent networks and algebraic connectivity. Multi-agent network is a network of autonomous agents that cooperate with each other to carry out uh, some given task. Each agent, in general, communicates with other agents to share information. In this talk, we assume that the communications among agents are symmetric and static. Symmetric means, means if agent I can send information to agent J, the agent J can also send uh, information to agent I. Okay? And the static means the, the uh, information, the links, communication links do not disappear or do not uh, appear. Just that uh, the, the links are constant, I mean constant. Okay. Now there are many applications of multi-agent networks, for example, sensor networks and uh, formation flight and uh, distributed optimization and so on. And in particular, multi-agent networks are uh, studied very hard in the field of uh, controls theory and uh, communication uh, theory and so on. So this slide shows the mathematical expression of multi-agent networks. Since communications among agents are assumed to be symmetric and static, they can be expressed by a simple undirected graph G. And the V is the vertex set. Uh, from 1 to n. n is the number of agents. Okay? Each vertex represents that agent. And E represents the edge set. And uh, if the edge between node i and j exists, it means that agent i and j can communicate with each other. Okay? This is a communication link, and this link is expressed by uh, edge in a graph, okay? And Those temperatures have... Yeah, this is the temperature sensor. Oh, temperature and uh, they 
measure temperature at the place where they're located. And the, the temperature differs from point to point, mm -hmm. and they communicate. And they, um, I will talk to you later, but uh, okay. They communicate, they send information of the temperature, and they calculate the average temperature by using these communication links. Okay? So, one of the basic uh, topics in multi agent network is a consensus. A network is said to reach a consensus if all agents take the same state value. For example, this network of uh, temperature sensors, the state value is the, the temperature they measured. Okay? And they send information to each other. And uh, a network is said to reach this state. This is a network has reached a consensus. All agent has now the average temperature of these points. So this is initial state, this is final state. What that means, final state? Final state. They send information and uh, they change their values. Uh, in the independent. I will talk to you later. Okay. How, how to, yes, this is the most important thing. How to, to send information, how to change the state value. This is very important point. Okay. And in average consensus is the most uh, important. And the state values x1t to xnt of all agents converge to the average. Okay, this is in, in in this case we say that the network is in average consensus. Okay. Oh, zero, not t, because zero equal, uh, at the time. Initial. Yeah, initial time is zero, mm -hmm. and uh, then they they update their values uh, time uh, as time goes on. So so finally, these values converge is expected to to this average of the initial value. Okay. So the. There are many applications of this consensus. For example, average computation in sensor networks, as I told you, and uh, multi-robot systems, and so on. So there is a very famous uh, algorithm, I mean, how the method of updating state values. And then here, we, by algorithm, we mean the state update formula, how to update the state value. Okay. The algorithm should be as simple as possible because agents in general have a limited computational capability. So this is the most famous algorithm proposed by Olfati Savel and Murray. They propose to, to update the, the state value of agent I by these differential equations. Here, xit is the state value of agent i at time t, okay? and ni is the neighborhood of agent i. Or, in other words, the set of agents that agent i directly communicate with. Okay? And by looking at this differential equation, it is very simple, because each agent increases its state value. Okay. If it is less than the average of the state value of its neighbors, it's okay. Because um, is it clear? Okay. And uh, each agent also decreases its state value if it is greater than the average of the state values of its neighbors. This is very simple algorithm to update the state values. Okay. So, their algorithm can be expressed in vector form like this. Here, xt is the vector, uh, n-dimensional n vector, xt. And here, a is the adjacency matrix of the graph G. 
adjacent matrix, each uh, entry, a, entry AIJ is one if and only if there is an edge between node I and J. Okay. Also, D is the degree matrix. D is a diagonal matrix. And the diagonal element is given by the sum of the, the elements in the ice law of the adjacency matrix. And L is the Laplacian matrix, uh, which is defined by uh, the degree matrix minus adjacency matrix. For example, let's consider this graph. And the uh, Laplacian matrix of this graph is given by this, uh, this. For example, the diagonal elements represent the degree of each node. How many edges are connected to, to the nodes? For example, edge one, uh, I'm sorry, node one is connected to two edges. So the first diagonal element is two, okay? and three degree 3 and uh, degree 5 and uh, because there is a uh, edge between node 1 and 2 we have minus 1 here, minus 1 here and uh, there is a uh, edge between nodes 1 and 3 there is a uh, minus 1 here and minus 1 here and important property of this Laplacian matrix is the sum of the elements in the each row and each column is zero. Okay? This is an important property of the Laplacian matrix. May I go to the next slide? Okay, this slide shows the fundamental properties of Laplacian matrix. Laplacian matrix L is positive semi definite because L is real and symmetric and diagonally dominant. Okay. And or because L is positive semi-definite because, ah, oh, this is not good, uh, because the quadratic form can be transformed as this. This means that there is a positive semi-definite. Okay. And also, the second property, the minimum eigenvalue of L is zero. And one, which is a vector of all ones, is an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue zero. This is easily seen because L times vector one is zero. This means zero is an eigenvalue of Laplacian L and one is the, the eigenvector associated with it. So the third property let the eigenvalue of, eigenvalues of L be lambda 1, which is 0, and lambda 2, and lambda n. Then, the second smallest eigenvalue, lambda 2, is positive, if and only if the graph G is connected. Okay. So details can be... Uh, so for more details, you can see these uh, references and... Uh, I'm not going into the detail of these. Okay. Could you explain a little bit more on the fact number three? Number three. Yeah, it's connected. Uh, connected. Yeah. Connected and means. Connected, uh, the condition. A condition. How, how do those facts are satisfied? Quickly. Uh, how it was shown? Ah, I see. Um, yeah, more story on that. Who proved it? Ah, who proved it? This, this is given in the, the, the paper of ah, Fedra. Yes, Fedra, in the Fedra's paper, this property has already uh, written. What was the key idea? Of key idea, the phenopropensinous theorem using the... It, I think this is very uh, close to the concept of irreducible. Okay? Irreducibility. Okay. Now, this slide shows the convergence property of the, the consensus algorithm proposed by Olfati Sabela and Murray. And 
if G is connected, the solution of the differential equation, this is the algorithm proposed by uh, Olfati Sabiri and Murray. The solution of this differential equation satisfies this equation. So xt goes to, so every entry of this vector converge to the, the average of the initial value of xi0, okay? And I will uh, show you a proof uh, in the next slide. So this theorem says that if a multi-agent network is connected, then it can always reach an average consensus by using the algorithm proposed by Olfati, Sabel, and Murray. Okay. Okay. So the, this is a proof. Let the eigenvalues of L be denoted by lambda 1 to lambda N. The lambda 1 is 0, as I uh, said before. Then there exists an orthonormal matrix P such that L is decomposed by P lambda transpose of P. Okay. And here lambda is the diagonal matrix. The diagonal elements are the, the eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix. And multiplying both sides of the algorithm by transpose P from left and putting YT, uh, P transpose XT be YT, then we have a diagonalized differential equation. Okay. And since lambda I is positive for I equals two, three, and N, we easily see that yt converges to, to this vector. Because the lambda 1 is 0. So y1t does not change. So it is constant. And uh, lambda 2 and lambda from lambda 2 and lambda n, it's positive. It, so the, the second, the, from the second and the third and the n elements goes to zero. Okay. So therefore, we transform, uh, tra uh, translate this uh, equation into to in terms of xt, then we can have uh, xt converges to this <coughs> x. Uh, I'd like to mention that the p, each column of the matrix p is the eigenvector, and normalized eigenvector of the Laplacian matrix L. And uh, the first column, is uh, vector one times square root of n over one. Ah, no, 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 no. Uh, one over square root. Yes, yeah, this one, this one is the first column of the matrix P, okay? Is, uh, do you have any question? Okay. Okay. So next I'll talk about uh, algebraic connectivity. The second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix L over graph G is called algebraic connectivity and denoted by lambda 2 G or simply lambda 2. The algebraic connectivity is positive if and only if G is connected as I said before. And if the graph G is not a complete graph, then Algebraic connectivity is less than or equal to the vertex connectivity. And vertex connectivity is less than or equal to the edge connectivity. So these properties, uh, the proof of, of proofs of these properties can be found in Fedra's paper. Okay. Okay. So for some um, very 
specific glass, we can obtain the, the eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix in a closed form. For example, uh, let's consider a star graph. Star graph S5 is shown here, and the Laplacian matrix of this graph is given here, and the eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix of a star graph Sn is given by this equation. The algebraic connectivity of the star graph is always one, independent of the number of uh, nodes. Okay. The second example is the path graph. The path graph P5 is shown here, and uh, its Laplacian matrix is given, uh, shown here. The eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix of the path graph is given by this formula. It's Okay, that's the, yeah, okay. Okay, we have some other uh, examples. Next, cycle graph C5 is shown here, and its Laplacian matrix is shown here. The eigenvalues of Laplacian matrix of a cycle graph is given by this formula. Okay. The last example is the complete bipartite graph. The complete bipartite graph K23 is shown here, and the Laplacian matrix uh, is shown here. The eigenvalues of this Laplacian matrix is given by this formula. The algebraic connectivity of complete bipartite graph is equal to the number of nodes, the first nodes, A. Okay. These, okay. Ah, okay. This is the end of my the first part of this talk. Are there any questions or comments? Are you clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's clear. It's okay. Very okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. I will switch. The, the speaker will, is changed to my graduate student. Sure. Yeah. Huh? So from the doctor, Mr. So Mr. Kento Endo of Okayama University will continue to talk on a new, uh, the, the same, yeah. Hello everybody, I'm Kento Endo of uh, Okayama University from Japan. The title of this talk is a new decentralized discrete time algorithm for estimating algebraic connectivity of multi networks. First of all, I'd like to talk about the background of this study. Multi network work have attracted a great deal of attention from researchers in various fields. In this study, we assume that each agent can communicate with only a small number of agents due to limited communication capability. <coughs> On the other hand, it is often desirable that each agent can know how strongly the network is connected. Recently, decentralized algorithms for the estimation of the algebraic connectivity have been proposed. In this study, we focus our attention on two of those algorithms. First, the first one, first is one proposed by Ian et al. in 2010. This is a continuous time algorithm. The validity has, un the validity has been pro proved theoretically. However, this is not really decentralized because it is assumed that each agent can know the average of state value of all agents. The second is one proposed by Yamane and Takashi in 2015. This is Continuous time algorithm. Uh, what, based what is the meaning of each agent can know how strongly the network is Can know what is the meaning of can know how strongly? Hmm? What is the meaning? In particular, each agent can know the algebraic connectivity of the network by using only the, the local communication. Globally. So each agent do not does not have the global information. Only communicate with neighbor 
How can we do that? It is a what is the advantage that we can have a truly decentralized system? Truly decentralized advantage. What is the advantage? It is it is it truly decentralized. The algorithm can not need global information network. It can estimate, it can compute from its and its neighbors information. We don't need a powerful agent. Uh -huh. Only uh, agents with limited computation capability. Yes, yes, okay. no central, we don't need any, no central agents that have very powerful computation. So this is the advantage of decentralized. Yeah. Uh, the second is one proposed by Yamada and Takashi in 2015. This is a continuous time algorithm based on the first one, but is still decentralized. The validity has been confirmed experimentally, but not proved theoretically. Okay. The goal of this study is develop a discrete time decentralized algorithm for the estimation of the algebraic connectivity of the network so that it is used by digital systems. In order to achieve this goal, we develop an based uh, we developed an algorithm based on the work of Yamane and Takashi. Our approach is summarized as follows. I'd like to talk about basics of machine learning networks. Maybe you can skip. Oh. Skip. Ah, uh, yeah, you can skip this. Skip. Okay. Uh, the main result of this study, I'd like to review the first one is the first one is continuous time algorithm proposed by Yang et al., which describes this differential equation. Here, xi t is state value of agents i at time t. I will show you later that vector x t converts to an eigenvector of L associated with lambda 2. Here, Ni is the set of agents with which agent I can directly communicate. K1, K2, and K3 are positive constants. Okay? Algorithm of Yang et al. can be written in a vector form like this. Here, Xt is a vector representing state value of all agents. And one is a vector of all ones, and L is the pressure matrix of the network. Eigenvalues of L are denoted by lambda 1 to lambda n. In addition, a normalized eigenvector associated with lambda i is denoted by pi. Oh, please. Uh, Effect of each term of the right hand side is shown in shown as follows. This first term makes vector xt orthogonal to the eigenvector p1. This second term weakens the components of vector xt along pn, pn minus 1, and so on in this order. Third term makes vector xt. A, a vector with a constant norm. Effect of each term is shown in this slide. First term, first term makes vector xt orthogonal to p1. Second term weaken the components of vector xt along Pn, Pn minus 1, and so on in this order. Third term makes Xt 
a vector with a constant of this gray circle. Total effect is obtained as a linear combination of these three effects. As shown in this figure, it is desirable. Uh, it, it is expected that vector xt converges to a vector parallel to p2. Okay. A convergence of algorithm of Ian et al. was proved themselves as follows. <coughs> Suppose that the network is connected and K1 is greater or equal greater than or equal to lambda 2K2 and K3 is greater than or equal to lambda 2K2 and inner product P2 and initial state value X0 is not zero. Then xt converge to either mu p2 or minus mu p2, where mu is a positive constant given by this equation. This convergence property also implies that each agent can estimate algebraic connectivity by this equation. The validity of algorithm of Young et al. was certainly proved theoretically. However, it has a serious drawback. As I mentioned before, each agent can communicate with a small number of other agents in general. However, looking at the first and third term of the right-hand side of this equation, we easily see that it is assumed that the average of the state values of all agents can be computed instantaneously. Therefore, this algorithm is not really decentralized. Okay. In order to overcome the drawback, Yamane and Takahashi proposed to replace the average computation in the algorithm of Yang et al with the following dynamic consensus algorithm. Here, XIT is time-varying reference signal. Uh, RIT. Uh, 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 RIT is time-varying uh, time reference signal. Input to agent I at time T, as shown in this figure. Okay. The pair of XIT and X hat i t is state of agent at time t, agent i at time t. This is modified version of the algorithm proposed by Spans et al. in 25. It is proved by Yamane and Takahashi that for each i, X i t can track the average of reference signals under certain assumptions. This is algorithm proposed by Yamane and Takahashi. Here, five, these five quantities represent state vector of agent i at time t. Uh, we see that each agent only needs information of itself and its neighbors. This means that this algorithm is truly centralized. The validity was confirmed through numerical experiments. Please go back to the why IT is expected to oh. calculate the, the average of the state values of the all age and Z, Z I T is expected to track the average of the Square, 
we have combined the uh, uh, continuous time algorithm proposed by Young at uh, the first equation mm -hmm. and with the dynamic average consensus algorithm mm -hmm. as given by the second and third and the fourth and fifth. Oh. Uh, I'd like to talk about our study. The goal of this study is develop a discrete time algorithm. In order to do that, we first propose a discrete time dynamic average consensus algorithm. We then propose a discrete time algorithm for estimating the algebraic connectivity. This uh, <coughs> proposed discrete time dynamic average consensus algorithm is described by these equations. Here, x, uh, r, i, k is time varying reference signal input to agent i. For each i, x, i, k is expected to track the average of reference signals. A similar algorithm was proposed by Zhu and Martinez in 2010. Okay. We studied convergence property of dynamic average consensus algorithm in the previous slide and obtained the following theorem. Theorem uh, suppose that the network is connected and there exists positive constants C and gamma such that this inequality holds and positive constants alpha and epsilon satisfies this inequality. Then the dynamic average consensus algorithm satisfies this equation. In other words, difference between x, y, k and the average of reference signals converges to zero for each i. Which means each agent can track the average of reference signals. Okay. This slide shows how the dynamic average consensus algorithm works. Let us consider the network of five agents as shown in this figure. Re uh, reference signals used in this experiment are given by sh these equations. Parameter values alpha set to 1 and epsilon set to 0 0.2. Please note that uh, reference, uh, for reference signals and parameter values, all of assumptions in theorem 1 was satisfied. This figure shows estimated value of average of reference signals. We can see that each agent can track the true value of average of reference signals which is drawn in this purple curve. Okay. And this is discrete time algorithm we propose in this study. Uh, we applied discrete time dynamic coverage consensus algorithm to here and here. Okay. Uh, these five quantities represent state of agent I at time k. Here, yik and zik are expected to track the average of xik and average square of xik respectivity and Vector xk is expected to converge to a vector parallel to p2. If this is true, each agent estimates lambda 2 by this equation. Okay. In order to examine the validity of proposed algorithm, we performed some numerical experiments. In all exp experiments, we use these parameters where delta is the maximum degree. The values of xi0 are randomly selected from a certain interval. 
networks used for experiments are shown in this figure. First, let's see the experimental result for network A. This figure shows waveforms of XYK. We see that each XYK converts to a constant. This figure shows waveforms of estimated value of algebraic connectivity. We see that each estimated value converts to the true one, which is about 0 0.52. For network B, C, and D, we also see that each x i k converts to a constant and all estimated value converts to the true one. We have seen so far that algebraic connectivity can be successfully estimated if the parameter values are properly chosen. However, it is not clear how to choose parameter values. In order to answer this question for each network, we identify the parameter region in which the proposed algorithm works correctly. In this experiment, we consider these conditions. This figure shows this figure shows uh, experimental result for network A. This blue point represents success and these red points represents failure. We easily see that success and failure regions are clearly separated this smooth boundary. However, it is not clear how how this boundary obtain analytically. For network B, C, and D, we, we also see that two regions are clearly separated by a smooth boundary. I'd like to summarize this study. We first propose that dynamic average consensus algorithm can track the average of time varying reference signals under a certain assumption. We then propose a discrete time algorithm for the estimation of the algebraic connectivity and confirmed its validity by numerical experiments. We also studied experimentally the parameter region for the correct estimation. Theoretical analysis of the convergence property of proposed algorithm and characterization of the parameter region for the correct estimation are future problems. Thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you got this, and these are the problems to yes, think. Please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Stand and do. And uh, Professor Takashi yeah, will add uh, the questions. Yes. View. View. This one? View. 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 And core. Yes. Okay. Okay, now I'd like to go to the third part of this talk. This is the most important part. Okay. And as you can see here, we consider not discrete time, but continuous time decentralized algorithm because it is much easier to, to, to study because no parameters alpha or epsilon in the, the continuous time algorithm. Now, um, this is the continuous time decentralized algorithm proposed by Yamane and myself. And it is uh, it's described by these differential equations, as Mr. Endo has already shown. Here, K1, K2, and K3. And also we have uh, alpha. These are positive constants. Okay, the 
this differential equation by uh, deleting y hat, we can obtain the algorithm in vector form. We have a uh, n-dimensional vector xt, yt, and Z, zt are n-dimensional vectors. And uh, okay, and uh, the O dot dot in a circle. This means the component-wise multiplication, right? And we have the time derivative in the right-hand side of the differential equation, but the, we we substitute this this equation into this. We can is easily find the differential equation without time derivative in the right-hand side. Okay. Here, the, the Laplacian matrix L is here and here and here. And L is decomposed uh, in the pro as the product of P, lambda, and the transpose of P, where P is the, the each column of this matrix is an eigenvector of the Laplacian matrix L. And uh, the lambda is a diagonal, diagonal matrix, and each diagonal element is, is the um, eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix here. Okay. And the vector xt is expected to converge to a vector parallel to p2. And the entries of the vector yt are expected to track the average of the xit, okay? And the entries of zi, zt are expected to track the square of the xit, average square of the xit. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is the component-wise multiplication. Okay. okay, this is the example. And, uh, as you can see, our algorithm, by using our algorithm, each agent can successfully estimate the true value of the algebraic connectivity. And this example, and uh, this example, this is, there are many uh, agents, those, but all of them can track successfully and, and then estimate successfully the true value of the algebraic connectivity. So, we, we know that these algorithm works, uh, works, but uh, the, the theoretically uh, we, we we have so far not proved the validity of our algorithm. Mm -hmm. okay. So questions and uh, uh, assumptions. Questions: What kind of equilibrium point does the system of differential equations have? This is the first question. We have to identify all equilibrium points. The difference, the system of differential equations have. This is the first step, and the second step we have to show they are stable or unstable, locally stable or locally unstable. And if we, we understand the the stability, then we want to know that all solutions of the system differential equation are bounded, not go to the infinity. And then we want to prove that the xt always converge to a vector parallel to p2. So this is uh, uh, steps to our goal, but uh, it's a long way. <laughs> and uh, uh, in this study, we make two assumptions for simplicity. The first one is the Laplacian matrix L has n distinct eigenvalues. All eigenvalues are dis different. For example, so this means that the second smallest eigenvalue is not zero; it's positive, which means network is connected. This is the first assumption. And the second assumption, k1 is greater than k lambda two lambda n k two and k three is greater than lambda n k two, which is much 
uh, stronger than the assumption made by Yang et al. They assume that K1 is greater than K2 lambda 2, uh, lambda 2 K2, and K3 is greater than lambda 2 K2, but uh, we employ more uh, stronger assumption for simplicity because lambda 2 is greater than lambda, uh, lambda n is greater than lambda 2. Is there a chance that lambda, lambda is Complex. Unfortunately, we don't know. So this is also an also the problem to be solved. Yeah, yeah, we have to see. So you consider undirected graph. So always lambda is a real because ah lambda is real. Okay, lambda is real. Lambda is real. Okay, yes, yes, lambda is real because L is a real and symmetric matrix. The eigenvalues of uh, Lia. Yeah, I am sorry. I am. Okay. So first, I'd like to show you some results of we obtained so far. The first one is as follows. For any initial condition, the solution of the system of differential equations satisfies this and this for all t which means that uh, some of the values of the, the, the elements of xt is equal to some of the values of the, the elements of yt. And also we have this equation for all t. But this theorem can be easily proved. First, we multiply both sides of the differential equation, the second equation, by transpose of vector 1. Okay. We, we multiply both sides of these, this equation and this equation by transpose of vector 1. And taking this into account, because L times 1 is 0. Okay. And, uh, then we have uh, uh, these two equations, which means the initial value of y transpose uh, one transpose transpose of one and y is equal to the product of transpose of one and x zero, and then its time derivative is equal. So, which means that uh, these two quantities are identical for all t. Is it clear? Okay. And the, the second equation can be proved in the same way. So, by this theorem, we can concentrate our attention on the equilibrium points that satisfy these two conditions. Okay. Because, okay. So, now uh, I'd like to talk about equilibrium point analysis. We want to find all equilibrium points satisfying this equation and this equation. This is based on the theorem I have just shown in the previous slide. Then the problem is reduced to solving the system of algebraic equations um, described by these five equations. The first one is the time derivative of x is equal to zero. So star means equilibrium. Yes, yes, equilibrium. Point. And you are using the notation, the circle dot. Circle dot is a component one. It's the same as the inner product. Not inner product. Because this, this. Just entry wise product. Yes, entry wise product. So it's a tra if you transport, then it's just the inner product, isn't it? These two values, uh, this returns the n dimensional product. vector, entry wise product. Oh. Then it's a, it's a ah, yes, 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 exactly, yes, so exactly. So in, is in, in, inner product. in computer science, you use that notation rather than inner product? No, no not inner product. This is the, the sum of square. Sum of, the, of square. In yes, so sum of square. Square of sum, yeah. Some, some of the scale. So ah, yes, the inner product of x and uh, itself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yes. Yeah. In mathematics, ah, we don't yeah. use that notation. 
Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, much simpler. Yeah, yeah, if, yes, if, yes. if you want to have a matrix form and mm -hmm. a matrix approach, mm -hmm. then it will be much easier mm -hmm. than you use the mathematical okay. symbols. Okay. Then you will, you will be able to find the okay. earlier result that you can apply okay. uh, for you to solve your problem. Okay. Ah, yeah, I'm, you're right. Uh, this, is the, this is equal to the, the inner product of x star and x star. Yeah, okay. Then the problem is reduced to solving uh, the system of algebraic equations. Again, this is the, the time derivative of x. Is, this means the time derivative. The right-hand side of the first equation is equal to zero. And this is the second. Yeah, yeah, let me go back. Oh. Okay, this is, we said the right hand side is equal to zero, mm -hmm. and uh, we said the right hand side of this equation to zero, but uh, the time derivative of xt is also zero. So we have uh, ly is equal to zero, and from this, lz is equal to zero. Yes, and these two equations came from this one and this one. Okay. Okay. From the second and third equations, we can assume that uh, L star is proportional to the vector one because y star must be an eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 0. So we can assume that y star is uh, cy times vector 1, and z star is equal to cz times vector 1, where cy and cz are constants to be determined later. Okay. Uh, since, uh, yeah. mm. since we need time to, to talk about the ah, yes, yes. so we will try to finish up your talk in okay. 10 minutes, okay. then we will have a 5 minute break, okay. and we will discuss ah, okay. 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. So, so 10 I, minutes more. Okay. So um, the substituting this equation into the first equation and multiplying both sides by transpose P from left, we have uh, this equation. Then the system of equations becomes like this. And by solving this, we can find all equilibrium points as shown in this slide. The li this is the list of equilibrium points. Uh, the first one is a type one we call type one. It's the origin. The second one is given by these formula, and this type of equilibrium points exist only when k1 and k2 satisfy this inequality. And this is the type three. We have uh, two n two times n minus one. 2n minus n equilibrium points expressed by this equation. Again, this is the list of all equilibrium points. We have already, we have succeeded to, to find and identify all equilibrium points. So, in the following, we assume that k1 is equal to three, k3 for simplicity. Be, um, then we do not have to consider type 2. Because K1, if K1 is equal to K3, this inequality is not satisfied. Yes. So we can concentrate our attention on type 1 to type 3. Okay. And uh, then we have to, to study the stability of each equilibrium point. This is the linearized system around the equilibrium points. It's not so easy and very complicated. And we have, a, uh, we have a linearized system, which is the, the matrix. Each block is given by this. And uh, each block is a n by n matrix. Okay. So let's consider the stability of the type 1 equilibrium points. Linearized system for these values, we can simplify the matrix as follows. And the characteristic equation for this matrix uh, is given is here. And uh, this 
this condition is satisfied if and only if the determinant of this matrix is zero or determinant of this matrix is equal to zero. And also this is equivalent to this equation and uh, this. This matrix uh, came from the, the, the uh, subtract the second row yeah, yeah. The, the second row minus the first row, we can have this matrix. Right? We multiply minus 1 to the first row and then add it to the second row. Okay. So, uh, because this determinant, the the matrix mu i, mu i is the identity matrix, and the plus alpha l is equal to this, and uh, the determinant of this matrix is equal to this, because p and p determinant, p and p is non-singular. Okay. So, this determinant is zero if and only if mu is one of these values. This is zero. And uh, all other are uh, negative. Right? So it means there is no positive uh, I am value. Uh, yes. So we next find a mu such that the determinant of this uh, matrix is not zero, but determinant of this matrix is uh, zero. Yes. And uh, if this assumption is satisfied, then the second condition is equivalent to this one. This, is, this matrix is obtained by um, multiplying Let me see. Um, we multiply the second column by mu and multiplied the first column by this matrix. There is a formula for the yes, block, yes. determinant of, of the block matrix. Yes. There is a formula ah, okay. in the two yeah, parts okay. the matrix analysis. Mm -hmm. So we can have an uh, equivalent condition and Finally, we by solving this equation and the assumption that k1 is equal to k3, we have a, a mu expressed by this formula. And recall that we have assumed that k3 is k3 minus k2 lambda n is great uh, is positive. So this is positive. And because the, the coefficient matrix of linearized system, so which means that the mu, all of these values. Are positive. So because the coefficient matrix of the linear system for the origin has a positive eigenvalue, the, this equilibrium point is unstable. Let me get, uh, go back after the, the, the break. So, mm -hmm. so we need uh, uh, neg negative real eigenvalues for the stability. Yes. So uh, negative real, but the the, the complex number, complex values so are possible. The but uh, the for the stability, uh, the real part of the complex eigenvalues must be negative. Must be negative. Yes. So here, mm -hmm. all we need is. Uh, the, the second term mm -hmm. should not uh, bigger than 
the first term. And in this case, the origin, we expect that the origin should be unstable uh -huh. because the, we, we, want to, we want to make x go to the equilibrium point parallel to P2. Mm -hmm. So this is good news for us. The origin is unstable. Uh -huh. yes. Okay, get going. Okay. But the, the problem is the stability analysis of type 3. Okay. okay, the linearized system for the type 3 equilibrium points are given by this. <laughs> so it's very uh, not so easy and complicated. And uh, so we have so far no idea how to find the, the, the eigenvalues of this matrix for each equilibrium point. This is a problem we have to solve. Mm. We won't, yeah, so. Mm. But uh, there is uh, some good news. Mm -hmm. Good news. For some simple networks, we find the eigenvalues of the coefficient matrix numerically. Mm -hmm. The results are summarized as follows, as follows. The matrix has only real eigenvalues. The second, for all equilibrium points such that x star is not parallel to P2, the matrix has two zero eigenvalues at least, and at least one positive eigenvalue. For all equilibrium points such that X star is parallel to P2, the matrix has two zero eigenvalues and 3N minus the, the rest of a negative. For example, we, we used the Scilab software to find all eigenvalues. Mm -hmm. The parameters are set to these values and uh, the first one is the, the eigenvalues for the equilibrium points parallel to P2. We have two zeros and uh, this is in decreasing order. All other eigenvalues are negative. The four equilibrium points parallel to P3, we have one positive eigenvalue. And positive, positive, positive. So, but, uh, so this is good news, but we have no idea to, to prove analytically. Even the problem that uh, the matrix has uh, only real eigenvalues, we, we don't know. Right. Okay, the summary. So what we have to do is the stability analysis of type 3 equilibrium points. And we expect that all equilibrium points such that the x star is parallel to P2 is stable. And all equilibrium points such that the x star is not parallel to P2 is unstable. And also, the, if we find the stability, so we want to prove the boundedness of solution and the global convergence property. But we, we first have to solve this problem. Okay, okay this is the end of my... Uh, Thank you, Professor Ashi. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Then we will have about five minute break. Then we will have a free discussions. Any, any comment? Any questions? Basically, your problem is related to whether you can mm -hmm. have parallel computing on symmetric positive semi uh, symmetric semi Okay, so, yeah, uh, we will have a sh very short break, uh, so you can have some drinks, and then uh, we, will, we will have a pre-discussions uh, on the problems that Professor Kahashi raised. Thank you again, everybody. Mm -hmm.